Hello. In this course, we will talk about two important concepts in electronics, something that you will hear many times, and that is input and output impedance. Let's start to discuss about input impedance first. Input impedance is the impedance seen by anything connected to the input of a circuit or device, such as an amplifier. It is the combined effect of all the resistance, capacitance and inductance connected to the input inside the circuit or device. It is normal to use the term input impedance even for simple cases where there is only resistance and the term input resistance could be used instead. In fact, it is usually reasonable to assume that an input impedance is just resistance providing the input signal has a low frequency. The effects of capacitance and inductance vary with frequency, so if these are present, the input impedance will vary with frequency, right? The effects of capacitance and inductance are generally more significant at high frequencies. Usually input impedance should be high, at least 10 times the output impedance of the circuit, and this will ensure that the input will not overload the source of the signal and reduce the strength of the signal by a substantial amount. Let's take an example so that you will understand it better. Let's say we have a 10 volt signal with 1 kilo ohm impedance. We connect this to a 1 mega ohm input. The input voltage will be then 10 volts times 1 mega ohm over 1 mega ohm plus 1 kilo ohm, which will give us 9.99 volts. I hope you know this equation by now. This is nothing else but the voltage divider equation. Now, if we reduce the input impedance to 10 kilo ohm, we get 10 volts times 10 kilo ohm over 10 kilo ohm plus 1 kilo ohm, and this will give us 9.09 .09 volts. If we reduce the input impedance further, let's say to 1 kilo ohm, we will get 10 volts times 1 kilo ohm over 1 kilo ohm plus 1 kilo ohm and we will get 5 volts. Hopefully you get the picture. Generally an input impedance of at least 10 times the source impedance is a good idea to prevent significant loading. Alright, now let's talk a little bit about output impedance. The output of any circuit or device is equivalent to an output impedance in series with a perfect voltage source. This is called the equivalent circuit and it represents the combined effect of all the voltage sources, resistance, capacitance and inductance connected to the output inside the circuit or device. It is normal to use the term output impedance even for simple cases where there is only resistance and the term output resistance could be used instead. In case there are capacitances or inductances at the output of a circuit, the output impedance will vary with the frequency. And the reason is because the reactance of capacitance or inductance is varying with the frequency, right? Usually output impedances should be low, because otherwise, if an output impedance is too high, it will be unable to supply a sufficiently strong signal to the load, because most of the signal's voltage will be lost inside the circuit driving current through the output impedance. This load here could be a single component or the input impedance of another circuit. As you can see in this circuit, we have a DC voltage source of 5 volts. This resistance is our simulated output impedance, and we have this 1 kilo ohm resistance, which in our case is the load. The reason why the output impedance should be low is because if you see right now, with 1 ohm output impedance, almost all the voltage from the power supply drops across our load. And this is exactly what we want. If we have a 9V battery, for example, we don't want to use only 8V out of it because the rest drops 
on the output impedance of the battery, right? Now, if we increase the output impedance, you can notice that the voltage across our load starts to drop and our circuit becomes very inefficient. Alright, so what you have to remember is that when the output impedance is low, most of the voltage source appears across the load and very little voltage is lost driving the output current through the output impedance. The second arrangement is when the output impedance is higher than the impedance of the load and in this case only a small portion of voltage source appears across the load and most is lost driving the output current through the output impedance. There is also a case when the output impedance is equal to the impedance of the load and this arrangement is useful in some situations because it delivers maximum power to the load. As an assignment for you, try to find out why if the two impedances are equal, we have this advantage of maximum power delivery.